Today on Judge Faith, are they bad tenants or is he a bad landlord? You're telling me that they're living in this home and as retaliation, mess with their toilet. Yes, they have, they have a problem with toilets. He doesn't need to scream at me. He's screaming at me at the top of the lungs. Mark, I want my deposit back. Mark, I want my deposit true, back. Sir. He not doesn't true. understand how this true, works. Honor. Some accidental burns left on the flooring seems to get him all fired up. The floor? He was oh, one of the he previous was smoking marijuana did. on my porch almost every day with his buddies. And one right the, now he's this. trying to embezzle some money out of this court to buy some more marijuana. Show me proof. Well, I think I've done the job of doing that. Actually, sir, that's my decision to make. And I'm telling you right now, you haven't. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiffs Gordon Alatore and Aaron Scanlon are suing their former landlord, who they claim to be dishonest, for the return of their withheld security deposit. Defendant Mark Bisporn says the plaintiffs were bad tenants, and when they decided to move out, they left the place a mess. He is countersuing for damages and emotional stress. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Judge, we have Alatore Scanlon versus Brisbane. Thank you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. Gordon Alatore. Yes. You and Aaron Scanlon are suing your former landlord, Mark Bisborn. That is correct, Your Honor. For $5,100, the amount you paid in security deposits that you say he is keeping unlawfully. That is correct, Your and Honor. And you are countersuing, sir, for $15,000 for floor tile repair, hardwood floor repair, and emotional distress. Yes, Your Honor. Let's start with you, Mr. Alatore. Now, you lived in a three-bedroom, two-bathroom home for about two years. It was about two years and a little bit more. Upon moving in, the place, it wasn't nothing to write home about. We were, we were looking for a place. We are trying to find something desperately. All of us didn't have, we're kind of moving out of our leases at the time. Well, of actually, his place. girlfriend. Uh, don't interrupt, sir, while he's speaking. Go ahead. Um, at that time, there was broken tiles throughout the house. A lot of the doors didn't close properly. You couldn't lock some when of the When you say, who doors. moved in in July of 2012 when you first moved into the home? Um, there was myself, um, the, uh, the other plaintiff that is not here today, um, and then two other people. <laughs> Okay, so um, there were four of you living in a three-bedroom home? There was four of us, yes. Okay, and how much did you pay in security deposits? Uh, we paid $4,000. So upon moving in, we did an initial checklist of the house, kind of went through everything that was faulty throughout the house. Some areas didn't have blinds on the windows, some of the screens were a little bit decrepit. But you chose to stay yeah, there? We chose because to stay you also there. lived there for a year and then you re-signed a lease, Well, correct? this was when we first moved in. Right. And then we decided to stay there even longer just because we, I don't like to move. Mr. Bisborn, how long have you been a landlord? 21 years. Okay, and you've been leasing this house for 21 years to various tenants? Um, pretty much so, yes. So how do we get up to $5,100 security deposit? You initially paid $4,000. When did you pay more and why? So in the first year, one of our other roommates um, decided to, was going to watch a dog of his friends. Um, at that point, they required us to pay a $500 uh, pet deposit, which we did. Um, okay, so that's $4,500. Yeah, so there's $4,500. Uh, upon re-signing the lease in August of 2013... I just want to understand, at that point, did you pay an additional $600 security deposit? Yes, So, So now the total is $5,100. Yes. Okay, when you move out, how much of your security deposit did he return to you? None. Okay, so you kept all $5,100. That's correct, Your Honor. Okay, did you do a walkthrough with him? No. They refused to do it with us. That's okay. False. So That's tell false. me, sir. So you kept all five thousand one hundred dollars of their security deposit. Why? Well, there's many reasons. One is Gordon especially started doing woodworking in the dining room, and that caused a lot of sawdust all throughout the house, which later required all of the ceilings and walls be cleaned of all of the dust, the sawdust that he was creating. Were you doing workshop. woodwork in the house? Yeah, that's correct, Your Honor. Okay. But we, we completely cleaned the house upon moving out. We spent okay. three days repainting and cleaning, deep cleaning. Do you have a list of the damages yes. that you say the uh, plaintiff caused the, the in the final, home? The final checklist. May I see that, After please? After they moved out. 
how are they as tenants before they moved out? They paid the rent on time every month? Well, when, a, when the tenants um, sir, first began... Did they, they miss any rent payments, sir? Yes, they did. No, we didn't. Okay, yes, they well, did. you're, not, you're not suing for back rent. Nope. They paid their rent on time? Yep. Uh, no, they, they failed several times okay, in paying Okay, so, sir, rent. do they owe you for back and rent? And I have documentation on this, My even though he's is, lying about Mr. this. Mr. Bisborn, yes. do they owe you for back rent? They, they, after they had bounced checks and failed to pay the rent, they did come up with the money. So the answer is no, they don't owe you for back rent? Correct. Okay, go ahead. So what were the other issues with their tenants? Well, like I said, he was doing woodworking ship uh, in there without any permission from, from me, and it was causing a lot of damage in terms of the You guys knew I was doing woodworking stuff. You absolutely knew. You never, you never raised that an issue with us. As, you saw us for six as months you can I was doing see that from work. the final checklist, there's a lot of damage. Okay, it's all so itemized. you're telling me this this final checklist is 10 pages. Have you seen this? Yes, I have. So you and that have, was, that you was have delivered to Sir, him. I'm speaking. You have provided me with a 10 page checklist of damages you say they caused to your home. Yes, Your and Honor. And it's your testimony that everything in this 10 pages yes, is Honor. over and beyond ordinary wear and tear yes. for tenants who lived in your home for over two years. That's your testimony. Yes. Okay, everything on this checklist, that's what you're telling me. That's correct. Okay. Your Honor, that's not there's, true. There's also Hold on a second. I don't want to be interrupted right now. Coming up on Judge Faith, some bad plumbing isn't the worst of their problems. You're telling me that they're living in this home and as retaliation, mess with their toilet. Yes, they have, they have a problem with toilets. And later, this. Did you return any of no, their security that's deposit? I did not. Okay, so you have to show me $5,100 worth of damages. It's so far, we're not there. Plaintiffs Aaron Scanlon and Gordon Alatore are suing their former landlord, who they claim dishonestly withheld their security deposit. Defendant Mark Bisborn says that when the plaintiffs moved out, they left the place a mess. He's countersuing for repairs to the damages. You have photos yes, from do, when Your you Honor. vacated the home? Yes, we do. May I see those, please? Absolutely. Okay, you took this photo when, when was, you vacated the home? That was the day before we were supposed to leave the house. Okay. Uh, we spent three days cleaning the entire house, repainting, scrubbing, cleaning everything, every inch of that place. What room is this? That is the living room, Your Honor. And is that what the living room looked like, sir? Yes, it Mr. did. Mr. Bisborn, I'm asking you, is well, that what the living room Well, there's a lot of like? things that are not in the photo. For example, the, the Venetian blinds are broken. You cannot use the wand That's it to... correct. You had to, you say you had to repaint this room, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay, what are because the issues with the paint? Just, well, there's lots of dust and sawdust in the paint. There is no dust or sawdust, Your Honor. Okay, we next painted, photo. So, it's clean. What's this a photo of? That is the master bathroom. Okay. Which I spent about two hours cleaning personally myself. I, it looks pretty clean to me. Listen, you're, you, you're keeping $5,100 every cent of their security deposit. So when you come into court, no, that's, that's you have to true. prove that's to me that you're keep. It is true, sir. There's, Did I'm, you return any of their security deposit? Well, there's nope. another factor in this. Did you return any of no, their security that's deposit? I did not. Okay, so you have to show me five thousand and one hundred dollars worth of damages. It's, so far, we're not there. It's in Let's the, go to the it's next in the photo. photos. It's in the photos that I sent to you. Who took this photo? I did, Your Honor. What, and that's of the kitchen? That's the kitchen, that's the oven that we cleaned. And in his, in his in his description of what charges there were, he said the oven was filthy and that he had to re-clean it himself. Upon moving in on our initial checklist, the oven was filthy. Why did you charge them for cleaning the stove? It's on your checklist. Well, in my photos, you can see that there's grease on both sides of the, of the oven dripping down on both sides. If you move the, on the oven inside. out. Yes, on both sides of it. There's you think that's it. beyond ordinary wear and tear to have grease in an oven? I'm just looking at this 10-page checklist, and I'm looking at when they moved in, they wrote the oven was dirty and greasy. This is when they moved in. And then I'm looking at your checklist. When they moved out, you're charging them because, and this is what you say, the stove is worn out and covered in grease. That's correct. If you can it's look at correct, it from the sir. top. It's not correct, sir. I've looked at your photos. It's not correct. And you're charging them $36 to deep clean the stove. You're charging them to repaint every room in the house. You're charging them for the paint, the spackle, the labor. In the itemized checklist, Mark also provided receipts um, to detail all of his ex expenses. He provided two receipts for professional painting services, one in the amount of $520 and one in the amount of $550. 
I called both of those painting services. One of them goes direct to voicemail and does not identify itself as a painting business. The other, I actually spoke with who owns the business, and he said he has done no work at 732 Avenue. He does not know this the is Bispo Bore name. This is false. He does not know How the Bispo Well, technically, name. ma'am, that's hearsay, and um, so I can't really consider it, because but, I know but, you spoke to someone who had a conversation. If you look also at the receipts, he purchased um, painting supplies, trays, brushes, everything like that. It's Yet he the, hired a professional service to come out, which provides that, provides that for I was you. Using, you do not have, to, you do using, not have to buy that material two. for yourself. The, pre the yeah. professional pre uh, painters provide that material for this you. This is irrelevant. You do not have to pay for that. He hired and yet he's charging us, I charge and he's putting that in the amount that we owe him, and he's taking that out of our deposit. Okay, hold on a second. I want this you to respond This is completely to irrelevant. They repainted every room in the house before they moved out, yes or no? No, absolutely not. In, okay. fact, in fact, they did a horrible oh job at painting whatever they did. And at one point, when they, before they moved out, I had a conversation with them. I could have gone to a corporate painting company for professionals, Mark, there are two and the cost would have been Mark, over $10,000. Ma'am, I'm talking. Ms. Scanlon, don't speak to him, please. You speak okay. to me if there's an issue that you want to address with the if, court. If I but I want you to wait a second. Coming up on Judge Faith, he's upset that they burned his floor. He was smoking marijuana did. on my porch, and one right the, now he's trying to embezzle some money out of this court to buy some more marijuana. Plaintiffs Aaron Scanlon and Gordon Alatore are suing their former landlord for their security deposit. Defendant Mark Bisborn says that because of damages, he doesn't owe anything. I'm looking at this 10 page checklist that you have provided to me. And even if I, sir, accept that the t that these tenants are responsible for everything you have listed here, which includes loose screws in a towel rack in the bathroom. Yeah, they it pulled, also they includes. The rack don't interrupt off. me. It also includes. You charge them three hundred and twenty-five dollars to mop the floors in the home. It also includes a charge for that. That's three hundred and twenty-five dollars. That's, that's what just, it costs to mop floors. That's not just for Apparently. mopping. I had a professional a cleaner come in, a lady come in, a, a, a clean, cleaning lady come in and did sir, every word. Sir, sir, I'm telling you, this is your checklist that you provided to me. Uh -huh. You charge them. Three hundred and twenty-five dollars to mop and scrub the floors, that's, which that's, we already and paid ourselves. And I'm telling you, that's ridiculous. Well, in the in the uh, photos that I have, you also charged wow. them for the toilet seat was no longer. These are your words, not mine. It was no longer tightly attached to the toilet. You provided me with ten pages here of damages you say they caused outside of normal That's wear correct. and tear. That's Don't correct. you think if someone used a toilet for two years, there may be a couple of loose screws? Why should they have to pay for that? Why I, are you charging them I've, for that? I've been doing this for 20 years, and I've never seen a, uh, a, a toilet uh, be jammed up with um, clothes hangers in the, in the hall suck. closet, old, for example. And they broke, so we try yeah. to fix them without you coming out. Yeah. Okay, let's get to the next issue because here, even though you provided me with this checklist, the total amount on your 10 page statement of damages you say they cost is $2,970. That's correct. Why haven't you returned the remainder of their security deposit, which is $2,130? Because there was a $1,045.03. A water bill, mainly because in their they had been messing up with the toilet in the hall for ever since they've been there, and they've called me several times to go in and fix it. I go in and fix it, and they mess it up again. It's retaliation because he kept messing up the house. I was because not I let me see. The, let me see the water. Are you going to show me the water bill, or am I just going to skip that part of the case altogether? The water bill. Yes. Yes. One thousand dollar water bill. Yes. Which is in their name. From what month and year? Well, according to the lease agreement. Uh, the tenants are supposed to pay pro rata the water bill as they had been, which was coming to a, about $50 a month. What was the average cost of the water bill that you were paying every month? $54. And who was this bill going to? It was to going the, to you, Mr. Biscborn? So you would get their water pro bill rata, every month? Because there's only one water meter on the house. This so who do they plus. share a water meter with? With me, in okay. a different house. Okay. So you would get the water bill and you would tell them how much they were supposed to pay every month? We prorate it per person. Okay. One month, 
You get a bill and it's a thousand. It's over a thousand dollars. It's over a thousand dollars. Why did the water bill go from fifty-five dollars to one thousand dollars? Because what was the cause of the because problem? Because they're they're they are always messing with the the toilet in the especially in the hallway. Sir, what proof do you have of that? You're telling me that they're living in this home, and as retaliation, right? Their retaliation is to mess with their toilet. Yes, they have they have a problem with toilets. So we can't <laughs> use the toilet? I mean, everyone's got to use the bathroom. Why would we do that? Let's, let's, let's get to the floors. What's the issue with the floors? Initial move in, there were four uh, tiles five. cracked, five tiles cracked. By the time they moved out, there were more than 20. Not correct, And I Honor. heard him say, Not correct. I heard him go into tantrums like he often does. Way what beyond, is this a photo of? It's way beyond wear and tear. <laughs> That's this probably photo? some marijuana that burned a hole in my <laughs> uh, That was from a hookah. Uh, it's tobacco and oh, yeah, coal, tobacco. coal burned on the ground. Which sure. we do he burned these holes in the floor? He was, uh, one of the he previous was smoking marijuana did, on my porch yeah. almost every day with his buddies. And right, right now, he's this. trying to embezzle some money out of this court to buy some more marijuana. <laughs> his logic is all messed up because he smokes too much marijuana. Now, Judge Faith rules. What, are, what is that on the floor? It's from a hookah. Uh, so it's a tobacco thing. They put hot coals on the top. So yeah, it, that did happen in the in the bedroom where it did fall onto the linoleum floor and it did burn some holes into it. Okay, um, next photo. Okay, and what is this a photo of? That's the living room just from a different angle looking in from the, uh, from the dining room. Before you moved out? Yes, this was okay. uh, July 31st. Okay, show me, you painters. have a counterclaim for $15,000, $5,000 for... Flooring. Floor tile repair. Show me proof that the floor cost five thousand dollars to repair the tile on the floor. Um, well, the 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 first time that they were installed was about four years ago. I don't have the receipts for that anymore because it's been a while. But I did uh, contact professional um, flooring people to do both. To fix I know the... you're not about to hand me a little piece of paper with some writing on it as your well, proof. This, this, this is $5,000 to repair a tile floor. That's the best evidence you have. Oh, oh, well, there are, there are. It depends on the contractors. It'll go from. Oh, so you want me to call them? No, I've already done uh, that. It's right here. I've been looking up. See, the house has already been occupied now. So, the so next... someone else is living there. Yeah. You haven't, you haven't repaired the tile floor. Correct. And you have, have no time. proof that it's going to cost $5,000. Oh, I know it'll cost more than that. I've contacted several contractors right now. Okay, so you have no proof. Should've You're suing for $5,000 yeah, for emotional stress. Tell me about that. Well, he comes to the house every now and then when he has a, a tantrum uh, a fit. And oh, you mean looking in. for his $5,000 security deposit? That's he's screaming, right. He's screaming at me at the top of the lungs, Mark, I want my deposit back. Mark, I want my deposit not true, back. Sir. He not doesn't true. understand not how true, this works. Honor. Not true. Exactly. He doesn't need to scream at me. $5,000 is a lot of money. Well, it's a lot, a lot of, of money for me, too. But it's How not much, your money. What do I do? It's not your money. It's their money. Well, it's and my money. And when you come to court, don't interrupt me. When you come to court, you have to justify why you are keeping $5,100 of their security deposit. It's your burden of proof to show that and prove that when you come to court. Uh, and that's you can't the just California keep messing State up the house affairs. and then expect people to pay you money back. I repaired your whole house. No, I you painted, didn't. No, we you painted. Didn't. I did everything. No, you didn't. We spent three days cleaning. Months, nine okay. months. Okay, I've heard enough. I'm ruling. Uh, based on the list of damages that you provided to me and the fact that those damages include items that you should not be charging them for, my verdict in this case is for the plaintiff. I'm dismissing your counterclaim altogether. You've already kept $5,100 of their security deposit based on your testimony that there were some damages, there were some burns to the floor based on my analysis of the case. I am ordering you to pay them back $4,500, verdict for the plaintiff. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.